Okay, so to deploy the Stonefly appliance, you just log into your Azure account, uh, select new, do a search on Stonefly. And you would select the Stonefly scale out and ask cloud storage. Read through the agreement and select create. This will bring you to the basics. Basics, you're going to give it a name. Give it a username. And Azure does have some specifics as far as the length of the username. They also have some specifics as far as the password length. This username and this password. Uh, will be blocked uh, by by the Stonefly appliance, uh, so you really don't need to keep track of this username and password. On the resource group, if this is your first, um, if this is your first appliance in the group, or or, or your first. Uh, virtual machine in the group, you'll want to create a new group, or you can select an existing group. In this case, I have an existing group already set up. Location, you want all your appliances in the same location, so if you if so whatever um, location you select, all your appliances should be in that same location. If you're using an existing group, the existing group has that location. Otherwise, you would select the location. Once you've completed this page, click on the OK. size, the minimum size uh, machine for the particular VM is the A3. With the A3 you get 4 cores, 7 gig memory, and a maximum of 8 data disks. Each Azure data disk is 1 terabyte. So you select your size based on the number of, of uh, the amount of storage that you're going to require. If you select A3 at this point and later on you need more storage, that can be uh, changed to an A4 with 16 or an, or an A7 with 16 data disks. In this case, we'll just start with the A3. Click on Select. On this page, um, 
all the defaults that are listed here uh, are sufficient. Uh, you may want to change uh, availability sets, um, uh, things of this nature, but there's no requirement to. Once you've made any changes, uh, you would click on OK. This is just a summary and a validation. And the validation is passed. You would click on OK. And now comes the time to purchase. Uh, in this case, we're not actually going to go through the purchase. I've already have a couple of systems already set up. Um, it, you read through uh, the terms and click on purchase. We'll cancel out of this. Now we'll go down and we'll look at the virtual machines. I have a virtual machine set up here. One of the first things you want to do is to set up the public IP address. You want to configure the DNS name. In this case, I've already configured a DNS name, the SCV-CVM-NAS-1. Once you set up the DNS name, uh, you can log in to the storage concentrator. How you'll log into it is https colon slash slash and the DNS name. This will take you to the login screen. Use the default login ID and password, login. One thing that we do recommend is that on your initial login, you change the password uh, from the default to something uh, other than the default. To do that, you go to users, details, You would type in the new password, confirm the new password, and click on Submit. And once you've done that, you're going to need some data disks. go in to the VM, select this, attach new disk, uh, select the type of disk, standard or premium SSD, click on host caching of read write and click OK. Once the data disk is, has been added, you would go to the Resources tab, click on Discover. Once the discovery completes, the disks that have been added would be uh, shown. In this case, I've already managed them. They would be shown, new disks would be shown. Um, use type of none, you would just select managed and click submit. <coughs> For now, 
for NAS volumes, we do require NTP services. You go to the system, admin page, and add an NTP server. This can be any server, uh, any NTP server of, of uh, your desire. It doesn't have to be the us.pool.ntp.org. Uh, that's just used, used as an example. Anytime you add a new node uh, to your scale out configuration, you would want to use the same, the same NTP server so that they're all syncing to the same NT, NTP uh, time. Once you've typed in the uh, primary NTP server, uh, you can add the secondary, secondary NTP server. Click on the Use NTP, click on Submit. configuration step is to go to system, network, local data iSCSI port. Our Stonefly appliance uses separate ports for management and data. Uh, with NAS volumes, you can use either the management or the data port. In Azure, this port is all the same but it still requires a configuration for the private internal IP address you would configure the private inter you would configure that as 255.255.255.255 for the public external IP address You use the virtual machine's DNS name. For the public external TCP port, that would be 3260, the same as the local iSCSI listening port. Click Submit. In the case of the Azure NAS only systems, the NAS scale out systems, the iSCSI is still required as a configuration. The NAS does use this port uh, for communications between nodes. So if this port is not set up, the communications between the two nodes or three nodes or 100 nodes would fail. And once this is all configured, you can go to the NAS, NAS segments, create NAS segment. Subscribe our channel and press the bell icon for more updates.